purpose of this short documentary is to serve as an arc for women who are currently dealing with storms. I believe that God called me to build this and there are some women who are dealing with some things that they haven't been able to articulate and they feel like no one else can relate. I'm just building this arc and I'm just trying to get a bunch of people on board so that they can go to a better place to a restored place, to a healthier place, to a place where there is life. The only thing that I want people to do after watching this is get up. I made phone calls, I was ready. I was at peace with me not having a place in the world. I sat on the edge of a bed with a bottle of water and a handful of sleeping pills. I was so scared. I couldn't, I couldn't even look at anything or anyone. My head was always down because I was so afraid to look up. I couldn't face the fact that I was in jail after my two miscarriages, I developed apathy for the things of God. I felt like he didn't care, and then I felt like he gave me something and took it away from me, not once, but twice. I became the one person I didn't want to become, and that was my mother. I abandoned my child when he was eight months old, just like she did me. I lost the one thing that I thought was gonna fix me, and I couldn't be that, because the meth addiction took over. There's no physical scars. For the most part, people may not even know that you're dead inside, and that's what's the scariest about it, because no one actively is there to help because they think everything is great. I describe it as like a python around my neck. Literally, it was squeezing the last breath out of my lungs. I was miserable, I hated myself, I wanted to die. Meth helped me forget that. Being in the back seat of the vehicle of a police car seeing my family leave, and losing everything that I worked really hard for, um, basically losing everything meant to me like a dead place. I didn't want to live any longer. I think every woman, when they were a little girl, grows up wanting to be a mother. You envision yourself being a mother, you envision yourself having these beautiful children, and then to be diagnosed as infertile and not being able to do this on your own, and having to struggle to do something that's so easy for everyone else around you, it kind of makes you feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Within two months, I'd lost everything I had. I'd signed over custody of my eight-month-old little boy, and it just slowly spiraled from there. I moved in with a drug dealer. He tried to kill me. I somehow got away, locked myself in the bathroom, and I said, God, if you're real, you'll get me out of here. For the first time, I never cared if I died or lived. You know, I wanted to die. Like, I tried to commit suicide a couple times. Like, I wanted to die. But in that moment, for the first time, I wanted to live. Like, when you're really faced with death, it's like, do I really want to die or do I want to live? I didn't care to worship. I didn't care to pray. I lost my faith. I was angry with God. I no longer trusted Him. After being let go out of jail, I had nowhere to go. I was homeless. And all I could remember was, you came here with two bags. That's all you have. You don't have a family anymore. You don't have a home. You don't even have a job. I didn't want to live no more. There is nothing worse that I can think of than waking up in the morning and feeling like I didn't have a purpose that I wasn't sure if I had one real friend, that I wasn't sure if I had one person that would care for me if something bad would happen. It just felt like I was taking up space. No one could have talked me off the ledge that I was walking onto because they didn't even see where my steps were headed. I called my parents, I told them I loved them. I called both my sisters, wanted to make sure they knew I loved them. And I made one more phone call to my nephew and when I heard his little five-year-old voice, I called 911. 
I had already taken the pills, it was too late. But it wasn't late enough for them to come and get me the help that I needed and get me over to a hospital. And so, to this day, my nephew, he doesn't know yet, he's not old enough, and I'm not sure that, I'm getting better with talking about it, but he's why I got up. He saved my life, he's the love of my life. And uh, I'm glad I heard his voice, otherwise I think I would have just laid there and went to sleep. Life for me is fun. Life for me is exciting. Life for me is never a dull moment. It's so crazy because then we think if we get saved, we have to have this boring life. No, my life's more crunk than it was in the club. I don't regret in any way the darkest moments that I've had. What I do regret is not knowing that there was going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. I think the only thing that was truly missing looking back 20 years later, I'm 34 now, was just the absence of Christ. I think there is a joy that when you know Him and when you trust Him and when you love Him, your lowest point is never that low. I got up because I want women to know that God is a God that heals, God is a God that gives joy, God is a God that gives the bare woman a family making her a happy mother. That's Psalms 113 and 9 and I cling to that verse. You're not alone, there's so many women, one in eight women, are struggling to conceive, one in four miscarriage. So there's so many women around you that you're probably friends with that you don't even know that's diagnosed with infertility or you don't even know that have experienced miscarriage. Not having anything after losing everything and just watching God just be so transparent and giving me life again. He brought my marriage back and my family back. On top of that, he gave me a business and I encourage everybody to know at the darkest point in your life, don't give up. Whatever you do, just know that God is gonna get you through it. And with Him, only through Him, He'll get you there.